Welcome to Toyota Time with Timmy the Toolman and Sean. What we have for you today is another modification to a third generation Toyota 4Runner. On my 98 4Runner, I bought aftermarket front and rear bumpers. The front and rear bumpers I bought come from CBI Off-Road from Idaho. And when I bought the front bumper, it came with an option to purchase a winch. The winch that you can purchase with it is a Warren M8000, this one right here. So whether you bought the winch with the bumper or you bought it after the fact, we're gonna show you how to install the Warren M8000 winch onto a CBI hybrid front bumper on a third generation Toyota 4Runner. Here's everything that came in the box. You have your winch motor, which is connected up to the drum that's either spooled with steel cable or synthetic line. You have your clutch mechanism here. This allows you to either free spool or to use the actual winch to feed line out or to take line in. You have your roller fair lead. You have your clevis slip hook. You have a bag of fasteners. You have your controller. You have this bracket that mounts the control box to the winch. You have your control box. And then finally, you have your install instructions, your, your operator's manual, and warranty information. And that's pretty much it. To get started for this job, we took the grill off. The grill is really easy to get off. It's held on by seven plastic clips. To get these clips free, you go in with a straight screwdriver, you go in from the side, you push the clip down, and then you can pull it back and free it. And you do that with every clip, and then you can pull the grill off. Now you can see there's a whole lot of room to work here. You would think that you can just grab the winch, drop it in here and bolt it up. The problem is, is the way CBI built the bumper, there's really not anywhere to get your hand in there with the bumper on the rig. The biggest access hole is on the back side, and you can't reach your hand in there to get a wrench in. So we're going to have to pull this bumper off. We're going to set it on a table at a comfortable height to work with and then we're going to get the winch onto the bumper and then we're going to put the bumper back on we're not going to show the removal of the bumper and we're not going to show putting the bumper back on because we already show that in another video if you click on the link above you can see how we got this bumper installed so the whole purpose of this video is to show you how to mount the worn winch to the cbi front hybrid bumper and wire it up and that's it all right, we have the front bumper off. We have it on a fold-out table. We're using a couple plastic two by fours. Regular two by fours would work also. We have one up on end and the other one flat right underneath this area where you can mount an accessory light on each side. So this way the bumper is kind of flat like it would be on the rig so we can get the winch plopped down and bolt it to the bumper. The first thing we're gonna install is the roller fair lead. The bolt goes in from the front and then they show having it followed up with a lock washer and then a nut. They actually didn't provide nuts like they show in the pictogram. They actually provided acorn nuts. I decided to buy a couple 716 flat washers to go in between the bolt head and the bumper. You don't have to do that, but I figured it would be nice to have a washer on that side too. So I'm gonna grab my roller fairly. The directions say the warning label faces up. The directions also specify use the center hole not this bottom one i got my bolt with my flat washer going in from the front because we have extra flat washers we're going to put a flat washer first on this side then the lock washer and then the acorn nut So it looks like the best fit for these fasteners, the acorn nut is a 17 millimeter and the bolt head on the opposite side is a 5 8. No torque spec, we're just getting them nice and tight. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get the control box installed. We're gonna get the bracket affixed underneath it's got two studs here we're gonna get that on first like that then we're gonna flip it over and then we're gonna get all these wires connected and you can see how they're named and they're color-coded this says f2 and it's blue it goes to the f2 that's labeled here and it's, they got a blue paint 
at the end of the stud. Same with the yellow connector here and same with the green here. And it looks like the best way to install them is they're gonna wrap around from behind and then come around to the front. So they're gonna come around from the back side of the control box and then into here. And then once those are connected, then we're gonna set it down and we're gonna get the bracket connected to these two points right here. We place the bracket over the studs. We put a flat washer on each one. And then we have these little lock nuts and it ends up the lock nuts are a 10 millimeter. So there seems to be a mix of SAE and metric fasteners with this kit. There's no rhyme or reason to it. You just gotta pick the size socket or wrench that's gonna work. Knowing that there's more room for the box forward towards the front of the vehicle rather than back towards the radiator, we're gonna set it up to where the box is as far forward as possible because this bracket allows for adjustment. So we're gonna push the bracket all the way forward with a gap showing towards the rear. And then we're gonna cinch it down. Before we get the electrical connections connected up to the motor, we wanna slide on these boots to each cable. So you just slide it over the metal and then work it over. Maybe a little twisting action, just like so. And then we're gonna do the same with the other two. We realized after you slip the boot over here, you no longer could see the label. So we just took a paint pen and marked the cables. This one's A, this one's F1, and this one's F2. It says right on the motor, the green is F1, the blue is F2, and the yellow has an A. The electrical connections on the motor, they've got two nuts. They have a regular nut on top, ends up it's gonna be a 13 millimeter, and then it's got a flange nut on the bottom. These are all just hand tight, the upper nuts, so I'm just gonna take them off. Like I said before, we're gonna route the cables around the back and around to the front. So the F1 is gonna go in the back one. The A is gonna go to the yellow. And then lastly, the F2 is gonna go onto the blue stud. Now I'm just gonna cinch them up with a 13 millimeter socket. Let's just do a test fit and see if the cables are binding up at all. After messing with the cable connections a little bit, we found that the big heavy duty positive cable is better routed to the outside over the top of the other cables. And then we just messed around to make sure that they were all sitting correctly. The studs for the mounting bracket that holds this onto the motor aren't contacting the wires underneath. And so now we have it to where it looks like it's gonna bolt up nicely. Next thing we have to do is we have to remove these Allen head bolts on either side so we can attach the control unit bracket. They're a quarter inch size Allen head. Once you have the cables in the position that you like, don't forget to slide the protective boots over the top of the connection. Just gotta work it over. Slide it down. Maybe a little screwdriver might help you to help it fit it over. There you go, just like so. Once you get both bolts out, this clutch mechanism is gonna to wanna to fall back. You wanna hold some pressure here so when you take both bolts out, it's not gonna flop back this way. You'll see right here, see how it wants to move back? I don't know if that's a big deal or not. Having an extra set of hands is nice. Sean's holding the clutch side while I get the control unit in place. So to get the Allen head bolt tight on this side where all the cables are, you can't really get in there with the socket. There's not enough room. So I'm just using a standard Allen wrench to tighten it up. The four mounting holes are right here. Two on the front and two on the back. Pretty simple. 
We just pick up the winch and put it on top. To fasten the winch to the bumper, you have these four bolts. They give you a lock washer and then this square nut. I'm deciding to add a flat washer too, so I'm gonna put a flat washer between the lock washer and the bolt head. The bolts go up underneath and then the square nut slides in like so. So with our bolt, with the lock washer, then flat washer, and then you gotta fit your hand in here. If you got big meat hooks, you might have trouble with this. You might have to get somebody else with smaller hands, daintier hands. Luckily I have small hands. You know what they say, small hands, small feet. <laughs> get your hand in there, and then try to get that thing started. You could use a little screwdriver to kind of hold the nut steady while you try to get the bolt started from below. And you'll feel it once it catches, you're good to go because it can't turn in here. The nut fits tightly enough in here to where it won't turn. Now the next thing we got to do is be able to get a wrench in here and tighten these suckers up, whether it's a open end, box end wrench, or a socket. We'll see what we can get in there. Here's where a small little shorty ratchet really makes it easier for yourself. I can actually get this sucker in here with the 9 16 socket and have enough room to where I could spin the handle and tighten up all these bolts. For the two rear mounts, I was able to use the ratchet. The front mounts, there wasn't enough room to get the head of the ratchet against the face of the bumper. So I had to use a box end 9 16 to tighten the two front ones. Getting the bolt holes lined up, getting the bolts started into the nuts, it's a test of patience. Don't be surprised if you fight this a little bit. Take a break if you start getting frustrated and then go back at it. But safe to say, I struggled to get all these bolts lined up. It was just a little bit of a pain in the butt, but I finally succeeded. One wire we didn't talk about just yet is this thin black wire. It's labeled motor ground. So this is the ground wire for the winch motor. You have to find somewhere where you want to attach it. A body part is a good place. So I'm gonna route it up and I'm gonna attach it right here at this bolt that helps hold the AC condenser on. So I'm just gonna route it up through here, right in between the horn wire and this rubber hose that goes to my transmission cooler and I'm going to take this 10 millimeter bolt off and fix it right here. To pull the ground wire away from the AC condenser I'm just going to zip tie it to this hard line that goes to the receiver dryer. Not really tight, just kind of loose. The Warren winch came with plastic wire loom over the positive connection, but it didn't come with wire loom over the negative connection. I went ahead and put split wire loom over the negative connection also. We routed both the positive and negative lines behind this cross member right in front of the AC condenser. We zip tied it to this cross member here. We zip tied it to the cross member right there. We zip tied it here, and then our route into the engine bay is this hole on the driver's side. We ran the negative battery cable underneath the battery tray, kind of in between the coolant reservoir and the battery tray, and then we brought it towards the driver's side. We went around this bracket for the fuse box, and then it looks like it's got a nice stretch where we can hook it right up to the negative battery terminal. The positive we ran right behind this big wiring bundle. We brought it up behind the fuse box. 
we routed it underneath the bracket for the fuse box and then it looks like it's going to have a nice stretch right to the top of the positive battery cable. We're going to hook up the negative side first because we want to have a ground first before we give the winch power. So hook up your negative first. Battery clamps are a 10 millimeter. So we have the positive lead connected to the battery terminal right at the top here. And then we have the negative lead connected to the side here on the negative post. Because of the size and shape of the control box and where it sits on the winch, in order to get the grill back in, you have to cut out a notch in the grill to where the grill will still be able to attach to the body. So we're going to have to notch out a section right about there. We marked out the areas we need to cut with a white paint pen and now I'm going to use my Dremel tool with a plastic cutting blade and let's see how this thing goes. With the shape of the Dremel tool, you can only get so deep before then you can't really get the blade in any further. So now I'm just using this Stanley tool that will fix a hacksaw blade and I'm just going to cut it the rest of the way with this, at least this bottom piece. We test fit it. It's still a little bit tight on this side so we're just going to cut a little bit more off here and then it should be fitting fine. We finally got the grill affixed. Originally I thought we would have to remove this one section one up from the bottom but it looks like you would be able to pull the plug up and this would clear so we didn't really have to cut this section out so I might in the future just pick up a grill from pick and pull and just cut out the bottom little cross member and keep this one intact this way there's not kind of a hole there it would just be a, a cleaner look now we're gonna get the clevis hook attached to the end of the cable the pin is just held on with the cotter key so I'm just gonna straighten out the cotter key While you're trying to bend the ends of the cotter key, the pin is spinning on you. So just grab a pair of channel locks, grab on the end here to hold it steady, and then you can get on here. A bent nose needle nose pliers works pretty good, and then you can bend the ends over with this pin being held steady. So your controller gun plugs in right here. You lift up this rubber grommet. You plug it in. It's got a flat side to the back. Just like so. It's got a couple little pictograms. So the bottom one is bringing it in and the top one is letting out. So if I hit the bottom, you'll see. And then if I want to pull out. Just like so. You ideally want the wraps kind of tight and you don't want them to be bunched up on one side. So it's basically like putting fishing line on a reel. You don't want it all bunched up on one side. You want even layers. So when you're going back in, a little tension is actually good. Now here's a safety message. I probably got it even too close, but you don't want your hand super close to this to where you can get it pinched in here. So when it gets close, you want to release your hand from it and then let it go in the rest of the way. A lot of people just hook it to one of their front hooks and then keep it just like that. So with the lever facing forward, that's where you're operating the winch motor. If you want to free spool, you turn it this way. Now you could free spool this. You get to where you're going to be connecting to your buddy's truck or you're winching yourself out, maybe a tree. You hook it up and then you start winching yourself in. So now let's say you're done and you want to winch the cable back in. You're supposed to hold on to this nylon strap. That's what they have this for. And then you have your buddy operate it or maybe you operate it yourself. You keep tension on it. Now he's going to start bringing it in. I'm doing this so the cable stays tight on the spool. Here's what it looks like all finished. We've got the winch nicely tucked into the bumper. We've got the control unit fitting in with the grill. We got a roller fairly connected. We got the winch cable hooked here. 
I'm going to look really cool cruising the mall with this winch. Alrighty, we are done with the Warren M8000 winch install on a CBI off-road front hybrid bumper. It's fairly straightforward. There are little hiccups like getting those bolts aligned for mounting the winch onto the bumper. That was a little bit of a struggle. The rest of it was fairly straightforward. You just have to take your time and get all the wires connected up nicely. You have to run the wires to the battery, zip tie it along the way. Fairly straightforward. I'm a novice with using a winch. I've never owned one. Maybe later on, once we get a little bit of experience, we'll make a video on some winching techniques you could use out in the field. I now have another thing on my truck that's gonna make me look totally cool cruising the mall. Waving at all my Timmy the Toolman fans. With all that said, we thank you for watching Toyota Time with Timmy the Toolman and Sean. We will be back with more videos. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you have any questions or comments, do that below. Take care. Bye-bye.